welcome to our review on satellites and orbits. So the first thing we actually need to know here then is that when we're talking about satellites, we're talking about something that may either be natural or it could be artificial. So when we're talking about a natural satellite, this is things like the moons, as you can see in the bottom left there. Now, the key thing about the natural satellites is that they're made from the same material as the rest of the objects in our solar system. If we think about the artificial satellites, like the bottom right there, these are the ones that have been sent up into space by humans to orbit objects like the sun or planets. So obviously very different from the natural satellite on the left. So what we actually find then in order to keep those satellites where we expect them to be, then they have to be in what's called orbit. Now we've got two types of orbit that we could use, a geostationary orbit or a low polar orbit. Now, natural satellites do have a different orbit from the artificial ones, but we're just going to focus on these two artificial satellite orbits. If you look at the bottom left, you can see a little diagram that summarizes the difference between them. So our geostationary orbit is that big circle going around the whole Earth there. Now, the whole idea about that one is that the satellite appears to be in the same position above the Earth's surface, no matter when you look at it. Whereas the low polar orbit, which is the one that just wraps very close around the surface of the Earth in the diagram, they travel over different parts of the Earth's surface in each orbit. If we think about our two types of orbit in a little bit more detail now, then what we're going to be able to do is compare the geostationary orbit with the low polar orbit. So make sure you know these key facts about them because you could very well be asked to actually compare the two types of orbit in an exam question. If we look at geostationary first of all, then the time it takes for one orbit of a geostationary satellite is 24 hours. And these have a much greater height above the Earth's surface than our low polar orbit satellites. So our geostationary orbit satellites will orbit around 36,000 kilometers above the Earth's surface. The key feature about the geostationary is kind of given away by its name. So geo is all to do with the Earth and stationary not moving. And that just tells us that these satellites will remain in a fixed position above the Earth's equator. So they remain in that one location. And this makes them incredibly useful for things like communication and satellite TV, where we want to be able to bounce that signal off that satellite, which is in the same place every day. Second type of satellite orbit we could use is the low polar orbit. Now these ones have a much shorter orbital time. So you can see it's about two hours and their height above the Earth's surface is much lower. It's only up to about 2000 kilometers there. The key feature about these ones, again, the name gives you the hint, is that it orbits over the poles. And these are the ones that we're going to use for things like the military spy satellites. We will use them for the weather satellites and for observing things on Earth itself. Because they've got that nice fast orbit, it means we get updated information throughout the day rather than obviously just getting it very sporadically. So if we've got an object that's moving at the right speed for the distance at which it's orbiting an object, then what we find is it's got a stable orbit. And that's things like our planets. So the distance they are from the sun and from each other and the speed at which they're moving holds them in this lovely stable orbit so we don't all crash into each other or the sun. Now, what we actually find is if we look at the speed at which the planets in our solar system are moving, the further from the sun we go, the slower the planets are actually moving. Now, the reason behind that is because when we go further from the sun, then the pull of the gravity from the sun is going to be lower. Because as we know, when things are further away, the pull of gravity is less. So what we actually find there is that it's only got a small force changing its velocity. So if we consider Neptune as an example here and what effect it would have if it was to move at different speeds. So if Neptune was to randomly speed up, then what we find is that that gravitational force would actually be too small to keep it in orbit. So instead it would end up flying off into the depths of space. Whereas if Neptune was to slow down for some reason, 
then what we'd find is that we'd no longer be able to maintain that fixed orbit. So what we'd find is it would start to accelerate towards the sun because the pull of gravity is stronger than the force pushing outwards. Hopefully by the end of this video you can now explain how the force of gravity can help keep an object in orbit. You can explain why the force of gravity changes the velocity of the object but not the speed. And we can also explain what happens if the speed of the object actually changes when it's in orbit.